All right, guys, welcome back to Strongman Theory. Today, we're gonna to be talking about training splits. So, let's get right into it. Training splits. A lot of people think about training splits and they just want to break it down to, what am I doing on what day? But I think it's helpful to understand why things are the way they are. So why are, why are these training splits structured like we're going to see them? And it really comes down to two factors, in my opinion. It comes down to successful strategies that have been implemented from other iron sports, powerlifting, bodybuilding, weightlifting, things of this nature. And a lot of times that does make up a backbone of the, it makes up the backbone of the training program, right? For the, for the barbell movements, we'll say. And then there are also event movements. So that has another huge influence on the way that we train and our results and how quickly we get good at certain movements and how quickly we can actually find ourselves injured if we're overtraining. So that event frequency makes a big difference. And we have two real schools of thought on that. And it's every day versus every weekend, right? So people will train events once a week or they'll train events every day they're in the gym or somewhere in between. It is kind of a spectrum, but let's get into a little bit of the pros and cons of these two training styles. So Right here, I made up a quick rundown of the pros and cons. I do want to mention before I even get into this, that a lot of the pros for the everyday training are going to reflect some cons of the every weekend training. And likewise, the, co the pros of the weekend training are going to reflect some of the cons. Like if something's good over here, it's probably because it is only better in a frame of reference to the other method. So take all of this with a grain of salt. With that being said, here we go. So for some of the pros of everyday training, it's very straightforward. You have more time on the events, right? Four days a week, you have two hours uh, a day, four days a week, that's eight hours of training on events. That's, that's a ton of time. Okay, I've, I've trained strongman for a long time and there have been a couple times where I spent like 12 hours in on a weekend training events, but the quality of the training really decreases, which brings us to some of our next points. You get to stay fresh for lifting is a huge, it's, it's a pro and it's a con um, of the everyday training type uh, as far as events are concerned because you get to be fresh so you get to see where you're actually at, but also, uh, you don't get a real frame of reference of how that, how that log press is gonna feel as the third event of the day after you did yoke, after you did a, a Max Husafel carry, right? So you have to be aware of these things and be cognizant of them. Another huge benefit of the everyday training is that your event skill increases more than the every weekend in my, in my experience and in my opinion. And that is simply because of that first pro of having more time on the implements. You get more time to train event specific movements and therefore you, you accrue experience and you accrue uh, and develop your skill more quickly in a overall time frame. So moving on to some of the difficulties or some of the cons of the everyday event training style or every gym session, let's say. Uh, it's really easy to overtrain. It's super easy to overtrain in this style. And you can find yourself overtraining by, uh, you know, saying deadlifting every week, uh, deadlifting twice a week. Uh, a really good example is say you're not so great at yoke, but you have access to the yoke all the time. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to train yoke every week. I'm going to train yoke twice a week every week. That will destroy you if you're going heavy at all. No one can recover from that. I don't care what's happening. Like you, you should not do that. And I only ever advise people to train yoke a maximum of once every two weeks. Um, that's a very event specific thing. There's other events that you can train more frequently like log, you can train every week, things of this nature. Each event is kind of different and we'll probably get into that at some point, but Overtraining is very easy in this structure and you should be aware of that. So you have to be careful. Uh, you know, increased frequency of event training can lead to an increased rate of injury. So it's along the same lines of the overtraining is if you increase that frequency, say you're training, you know, 
yoke is just a great example because I, I myself have hurt myself on the yoke. I basically destroyed my pelvis, made it so my spine wanted to slide straight through my pelvis um, because I was just beating my body up with eight fifty pound and nine fifty pound yokes every week for I think it was six weeks before it really started to tear into me. And then just my whole, like everything from my ribs down just started falling apart and it was terrible. Like my arches were collapsing, my knees were all jacked, my hips were messed up, my like, oh, it just, everything hurt and it was terrible. And I can pass that knowledge on to you. So please be careful with that. Don't do yoke every week. That's a terrible idea. I don't care who tells you to do that. If anyone's telling you to do that, and if they are, don't listen to them. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. So another con of this everyday lifting is, or event training, is you need to live in the right place, right? You need to live around a gym or have a home gym, uh, have the space for a home gym that can support this style of training. And that's not as common as you may think. Um, it's more common than it used to be, but I would say, well, I mean, given that so many people live in urban areas, maybe more than half of the population does have access to that kind of thing. But like, I certainly don't. I don't have event, or I don't have access to an everyday style of training. And uh, that may be the case for you as well. So let's talk about the every weekend style training, okay? So in this, uh, it, you know, one of the biggest pros of the, every weekend training split for events is that it's self-regulating with its difficulty and its fatigue. So you will become fatigued after one event, two event, three events. I think the most events I've ever trained on a single day was like six or seven. And by the end of it, I was just trash. Like it was, it was not, I was not doing so hot. <laughs> I was going hard. And I, like, I do think that I have one of the best engines or had one of the best engines in the sport, um, potentially ever. And that, knowing that I can only train not even 10 events, um, you know, when, you know, when maybe you could train two or three events per day in the everyday one, like, that's another, that's another, uh, I guess, source of support for the fact that you can accrue more skill from this style. But again... It's a little bit, I think it's a little bit safer overall to train the every weekend style, especially for beginners. And it's just more convenient and it's easier to structure programs and um, gym access isn't as complicated. Uh, but you also get a superior gym lift uh, development. So that's something that some people I think will overlook. If they enter into the sport of strongman and focus on strongman too early, they may not develop certain movements that need time to develop. A great example is just the deadlift, right? You just have to spend time deadlifting at a certain point uh, to develop a deadlift. Uh, and it has to be done correctly and it, it takes time. You can't just, you do all these other movements and then just be like, I'm strong enough, I can just deadlift 900 pounds. It takes time. And uh, if you're in the normal gym, often, then you will have more time around that equipment to potentially focus on that. And if you're wise, you will focus on it if you're looking at being successful in the sport of strongman. <sighs> you get uh, a more realistic feel for contests as well with this. You do experience the fatigue after a couple events. You know how you're gonna feel. I even, I don't think I've ever released any of this footage and maybe I will in the future, but I used to do something that I called a contest medley. And that was when I would do an entire contest in one go, and it would be like 10 minutes. And I would do just everything in the contest. And uh, I'm, I'm almost positive no one else has ever done that. That's just the stupidest thing. <laughs> but, but you can do the same thing in a day. If you need to know how you're going to feel for the loading event at the end of these other four events in a one day contest, well, with a weekend setup, you can do the four events at, we'll say 70%, and then you can feel a similar fatigue that you will experience and you'll say, man, okay, well maybe I should strategize. This deadlift's really heavy and I pulled 10 and I was gonna just pull all out and it's the fourth event. Maybe I should, you know, pull one, get some points. There's gonna be some zeros. I'll be in the middle of the pack. And then on the stones, I'm gonna separate myself and I'll, I'll keep myself healthy and I'm gonna separate myself from the field. And that's where I'm gonna give up some points. There's a little bit of strategic, um, a little bit of, 
strategic planning for your points. I used to do that a lot for contests, but that was also because I knew my competition extremely well. Anyway, and then a huge one, mm, training crew, right? For the weekends, oh man, training crews are so great. Like you get to meet up with your people and you just lift in this environment that is so supportive and uh, just some of the best training days I've ever had were definitely on this style of split and it's very, I, I, uh, I seem to have a favorite, <laughs> you know, results and then like just favorite. So let's talk about some of the cons. Like I said, um, you know, the cons for the every weekend movement are really the opposite of the pros for the everyday because all of this is in a frame of reference in contrast to one another, right? So you get slower skill development with the weekends, but it's, it's slower because it's in reference to how quickly you can develop it with the everyday. It doesn't mean that it's slow. It doesn't mean that, oh man, it's going to be years before you even get good at something. No, it means that, hey, like, you know, you can only do one pressing event a day, you know, and like, like a good example is like, if you only have access to an axle one day a week, you know, and you spend it on deadlifting or pressing or both, then maybe you're not going to get access to the log for like another week. But like in the everyday style of event training, you can train axle press on one day and then maybe you can come back and do a little bit of support work on the log. Like there's, there's a lot of different things that you can do and the urgency isn't there and you're not constrained by this fatigue and this, uh, this we'll say difficulty and fatigue factor. So I know that was quite a bit and I have a lot more to say on the topic. And so we're gonna have to actually split this up into two. And so next time I plan to talk to you about the every weekend split effective ways to structure that. Um, and that might get a little bit nebulous because at some point we're really gonna have to focus on evaluating weaknesses before we look at structuring training uh, strategies to address the weaknesses. And then the next next time, we're going to assess the other one. We're gonna look at the everyday training split uh, more in depth. So if you guys like the content, please, let me know, give a thumbs up, like, share, all that shit. And then uh, if you guys have any questions or know anyone who has questions, please feel free to comment or ask those questions because uh, I, need, I need things to talk about, right? And I want to share my knowledge with the community. So uh, again, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.